Shalom everyone, uh, greetings, and I want to bring out today a little bit about what our king was speaking of concerning the few, only a few are going to make it into the kingdom. And by the looks at, uh, I'm here on my channel page, uh, and it's not completely factual, as you can see here, you know, and I can get more views by mentioning famous people or reptilians, things of this sort, and get more views. Here it shows 22 views, and I just uh, redid this page, but clicking on it, you'll see down here there's actually 42. Well, you, man, you've uh, got a large... And that's a lot, you know, 42 views. And even when I go back, it shows here again 22. So something's messed up with the channel here. Uh, as you can see, I've had 141 subscribers over about four years' time. So there's actually 141 individuals that thought that the words that come from my mouth were worthy of uh, listening to enough that they actually subscribed. Only a few is going to make it. Now, if everybody listened to these videos that I'm bringing forth with our King's words coming out of my mouth, because I don't like to speak anything but these things, and our Heavenly Father's every living word, uh, for the most part, most people have not heard the every living word, unless, of course, uh, they read the Holy Scriptures themselves. If you're out there in the churches today, you're not really going to hear the every living word. You're going to hear the words that are going to do what Satan does here, you know. And I'm going to point it out to you, you know, why a lot of us think that it's our past sins that we're suffering from up until our king comes but you know that's simply not uh, as factual as we'd like to believe and you'll you'll discover this the more you walk in the every living word uh, it first coming out of course we get whooped up on you know when we discover that we have been sinning and we turn from the sins we should expect to be chastised but there's a time when we finish paying for our sins and yet, <laughs> you know, it seems like even bigger troubles come on us, but it's not because of the sins we did. Once we get to the point where we are actually forgiven, and our king's not going to just forgive us the moment you discover a Jesus, you know, it's not like you're forgiven of your sins, because the very next thing you know, you get baptized, you run out, and you have a ham sandwich to celebrate your baptism, which goes totally against what our king came to teach. So therefore, you got this sin on you again. When you become forgiven, it's when you come to realize what you're forgiven of. And the more and more that you learn of that you are sinning in, and you repent of, it's like another board in the hedge, or another board in the fence, that's around us in that fence keep satan away from us as it shows here in uh the book of job or the book of job let's read through it real quick so you can you know get the gist of what i'm saying but i want to get on to like i say this is basically a study on only a few going to enter into the kingdom only a few is going to find the path although most anyone you talk to today knows the Jesus, and they're all following the Jesus, and yet only a few of those that follow the Jesus are going to actually make the kingdom. Uh, and that's because they're doing the things that the scriptures, where the name Jesus, a name that's only 300 and some odd years old, is taking the place of Yahshua, our king's name. Uh, but there will be a few Jesus uh followers because they will keep the laws and the commandments put them as the utmost thing in their heart so they could please our heavenly father through his righteous son that laid his life down for our sins now before that time came that Yahshua laid his life down you had Job here and uh, Job he understood you could read in his readings that he knew he didn't have a mediator yet between him and father Yahweh so he's like why would Yahweh even hear my words they don't even have a mediator you know but anyway here in Job chapter 1 verse uh, 6 we'll start out with it says now there was a day when the sons of Yahweh came to present themselves before Yahweh and Satan also came among them Okay, showing that Satan wasn't a son. In fact, Satan's actually a female, the queen of heaven. 
And Yahweh said to Satan, From where do you come? So Satan answered the father and said, uh, From going to and fro on the earth and from walking back and forth on it. Then Yahweh said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? Okay, Satan didn't even come and say, Hey, you know, I see your servant Job. Yahweh says, Hey, have you seen my servant Job? And, and the reason he said this is because Job is walking in our father's ways, and there's nothing yet been able to uh, knock Job off that path. So Yahweh, in his ultimate love, says, Hey, did you consider my servant Job? <laughs> that there is none like him on earth, a blameless and upright man, one who reverences or fears Yahweh and shuns evil. So Satan answered Yahweh and said, Does Job fear Yahweh for nothing? <laughs> you know, I mean... And that's, you know, what goes on with each and every one of us that overcome the sins that we discover we're in, repent of them, and never do them again. Well, do we reverence or fear Yahweh for nothing? Well, no, we, we do it because it's the only thing that makes sense. But pay attention to what Satan says here. Have you not made a hedge around him, around his household, and around all that he has on every side? You've got this wall of protection all the way around Yob. Well, Yob built that protection because he believed the words of our Heavenly Father, and he walked in them. And every time he discovered he had a sin during his lifetime, he put another board in there by overcoming that sin for his wall of protection. And Satan sees it and says, Have you not made a hedge around him, around his household, and around all that he has on every side? You have blessed the works of his hands, and the possessions have increased in the land. And, of course, it seems like the total opposite for me, because mm, the works of my hands don't seem like they're blessed at all. It uh, seems like I'm paying for sins, but I'm not. I'm being chastised, and I'm being tested and tried. It's a totally different thing than paying for your sins. Tests and trials come. They have to come to make you doubt, man. Does our Father even know us? Does the Son know me? You know, you go through these things, but you don't let it sway you to go off eating a ham sandwich in a victory lap for Satan. You say, no, I'm just going to keep going no matter what, because if I'm destroyed, may you just burn me up, and, and that be the end of it, because this life sucks, Father Yahweh. Through your Son, it sucks, you know? And, and everywhere I look, there's nothing but, you know, tests and trials. There's nothing but destruction, and... And everything I touch turns to manure, you know? But anyway, Yahweh says the same, but now stretch out your hand and touch all he has, and he will surely curse you to your face. Okay, this is what Satan was saying, excuse me. Satan saying, you know, stretch out, touch all that he has. You know, make the things turn to dust. Uh, you know, let people come and steal everything he has, and he will curse you to your face. And Yahweh said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your power. All right, now there's a scripture I'd like you to bring up in the front of your mind. If you've read it before, and if not, I ask that you search it. It talks about after the dragon goes after the seed of the woman, okay, the child. Satan's going to be given power over them all. Okay, Satan can do basically what she wants to do with us. And she's been doing it for a long time, you know, and she has uh, really showed forth a lot of effort in the things that, you know, come down on me personally. And I know the other 143,999 brothers of mine out there are having the same problems come on them to test them to see if they'll still stay as Job did, you know, scratching, you know, wounds full of worms, you know, or whatever it is, into the fire, just to stay loving our Heavenly Father and saying, well, you know, whatever it is that you allowed to be bring, brought on me, you know, well, you know, I, I just pray that you take this as an offering. I'm a walking sacrifice, a living sacrifice to you, Father Yahweh, through your son, Yahshua, and I desire not to sin. So if I got to go through all this stuff, for this pain, this sorrow, this suffering, so that I can suffer as Yahshua did on this earth, so that it would be a blessing to you, 
Well, so be it. But even though I don't want it, <laughs> you know, let it be a blessing to you. And Yahweh says, Behold, all that he has is in your power. Only do not lay a hand on this person. So Satan went out from the presence of Yahweh. Now, at that point, it was don't lay a hand on his person. Okay, now after he was tested and tried and his whole life turned to manure around him, no matter what he did, became a curse, uh, then Satan was allowed to attack his person. You know, I've had colon cancer, I've got, you know, teeth breaking and falling out, all kinds of stuff going on. I've been sick and ill and afflicted, you know, most every day of my life. I have no quality of life. I'm riding a bicycle for crying out loud, and I'm thankful for it, but I, I still have a problem leaving my house because there's nothing out there. I know the whole earth is defiled. If I buy something from the store, i got to bring it home and wash it first before I even put it in my cupboard. And it's not even going to become clean, really, until after sundown. And half the time, what's in those packages that's being sold are totally defiled as well. The whole earth is defiled. It talks about in Isaiah 24. But anyway, let's go here to Matthew 7.21. And this is what Yahshua says. Not everyone who says to me, Yahshua, Yahshua, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Now, the last couple videos I brought out was on the will of the heavenly Father. What is his will? It's for you to worship him, and worship means to obey. So we are to obey our Father. When he said, thou shalt not eat pork, you know, that's exactly what it meant. Our king didn't come to do away with a single thing that our heavenly father brought forth, said, or laid down as the rules of the kingdom. Our heavenly father's son kept every word, and he tells us to do the same. In fact, he's showing you here. He says, many will say to me in that day, Yahshua, Yahshua. Have we not prophesied in your name, Yahshua? Cast out demons in your name, Yahshua, and done many wonders in your name, Yahshua. Now, yeah, there are those that, uh, you know, if Satan casts out Satan, her kingdom won't stand. Well, we all know that her kingdom isn't going to stand. And there's many people across this earth today that are plagued by little devils that bring on certain illnesses, diseases, things of this sort. They'll go to their lying preacher. They'll lay hands, and in the name of Jesus, you know, the demons will leave. It'll build their hopes and dreams in a false name. You know, the Lord, Baal, they'll love Baal more and they'll pray to Baal more in the name of the Lord. Okay, same thing as El and Elohim, the chiefest deity of the Canaanite pantheon. When they call on God, whether big letter G or little letter G or all capital letter Gs, they're all praying to El and Elohim and Elion, these chief deities. So Satan is using every trick in the book and allowed to do so to keep people deceived. And then Yahshua says, you know, because these are doing many wonders, even in the name of Yahshua, they're not keeping the laws and the commandments and such. And that's why Yahshua is going to say here, and then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me. Depart from me who? You who practice lawlessness. You who practice breaking the laws is what he's saying. You who keep Christmas and Halloween and Easter and uh, Thanksgiving, all these pagan feasts that you're told not to participate in, those who eat pork and possums and skunks, those who commit adultery and fornication, those who murder, have abortions and such. Now, all these things can have repentance for it, but the problem is, most people don't know how to repent because their preachers haven't told them. So please pass on these videos and hopefully people will start to understand how they can get salvation. And a few more will come into the path to righteousness. So here we are in Matthew 20 verse 8 and it talks about uh, so when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to a steward, Call the laborers and give them their wages, beginning with the first last. Okay, so those that were hired about the eleventh hour, they each received a denarius, and, <coughs> and so on and so forth. Well, it gets down to uh, 
the fella here, you know, this is, uh, these last men worked only one hour and you made them equal to us who had borne the burden of the heat of the day. Now, this is a parable. It's not talking of people actually out there gathering grapes. What it's speaking of is those that are called out in these last days. Some are called out 40, 50 years ago. Some are called out last week or today. But yet, when our king returns, he's going to give the same reward to everybody. You know, whether you get death or whether you get life, you're going to get a reward. And then this fellow says, but he answered one of them and said, friend, I am doing you no wrong. Do you not agree with me for a denarius? You know, you agreed with me, man. When you came and you said you would start keeping these laws and commandments and living by the every word and that you would get life for it, you know, didn't you agree to that? Then he says, take what is yours and go away. I desire to give to this last man the same as to you. Is it not lawful for me to do what I desire with my own things? Or is your eye evil because I am righteous? And then he says, so the last will be first, you know, which means, you know, though I was, you know, the first also to be called, one of the first, there are those that are going to be last. But it says here, so to the last, it'll be first, and the first will be last. I hope that I'm going to be in the very back of the line, okay, when salvation comes, and everyone's going to our king to receive the rewards. I want to be the last one in line. And I guess for a selfish reason, because if I'm going to be condemned, I don't want no one to see it and rejoice. You know, our king can just whoop my butt and burn me up, whatever, you know, without anyone seeing but on the other token, I'd love to see all those that I've talked with, you know, and whether they did right or wrong afterwards, what their reward is going to be, I, I'd like to see it. It says, for many are called, but few are chosen. Okay, there's many people called. They, they get a little bit of understanding, a little bit of knowledge, and what do they do with it? And do they go off and start eating pork again or keeping Halloween and Easter? Uh, do they need to go out and, you know, commit fornication or murder or whatever? You know, it, it, there's many called, but few are chosen. Here in Matithia 22, uh, it speaks again down here, okay? But it's talking up here about those that are invited to this wedding feast. Uh, and you can also use this symbolically, you know, where first people were invited to come and then Noah got on the ark, you know, and uh, none of them, you know, were worthy of it. And then there was another time that they were brought out. And, uh, you know, this was basically, you could say, you know, when our king was here and, you know, few, you know, if any, there were 120 people, around 120 people on the day of Pentecost that believed our king enough from all the time he had lived on the earth and all the messages he preached, brought forth all the healings and everything else. Only about 120 received Holy Spirit at first were gathered in the place he told them to be on that day of atonement. And there were those outside, even uncircumcised, that received the Holy Spirit afterwards, but those that had believed our king up until that day, only about 120 had believed. So then again, it says, so those servants went to the high, he, he's telling them again to go out in these last days, okay? And they talked, but when the king came to see the guests, he saw a man there who did not have on the wedding garment. Now, what is this wedding garment? It's the very same thing we were discussing in Job. It is that hedge that we put around ourselves, the hedge that our Father allows us to build, this wall of protection. It's the keeping of the laws and the commandments and putting our trust fully in Yahshua, our King. This individual didn't do that, but he's yet there because everybody's being called today, whether you're great, bad, evil, wicked, or righteous. We're all being called to this wedding supper. So then it says, because he wasn't keeping the laws and commandments, and our father saw it, he, says, so did he, he said to him, Friend, how did you come in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. 
Then the king said to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, take him away, and cast him into outer darkness, where there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Why? For many are called, but few are chosen. Many are called, but few are chosen. And today, you know, as I've said, you know, there are billions of people on this earth today saying they believe in the Jesus and they're going to have salvation. It doesn't work that way. You have to live by the every living word. Our king commanded that. That's how you gain your protection. And that's what starts your tests and trials. Now, you may say you know our king and then all of a sudden bad times come on you, which is a payment for some of those sins that you've committed in your past, but it also speaks of those that, uh, you know, for some, their sins are paid for before the judgment, but then there are some whose sins will be paid for at the judgment. Here in 24, verse 45, it says, and this is under the faithful servant and the evil servant. It says, Who then is a faithful and wise servant? whom his ruler has made ruler over his household to give them food in due season. Now, some might say, well, you know, it's talking about Cheerios and Cheetos. No, our king had spoke of uh, in John or Yachinon chapter 4, uh, after he spoke to the woman at the well, right afterwards his disciples came, they had food and such, and he, he said, I ain't hungry, man, you know? And they said, well, how, how could this be? And he's like, well, you know, I have food you know not of. This is the food that's being spoken of in this parable. It's the words that I bring. I've got, you know, hundreds of videos that speak these words in all different ways. Open that, you know, sometimes someone's going to hear one of these videos and boom, it's, a light's going to come on and they're going to understand and they'll become one of the few that are chosen. Many are called, but few are chosen. And I'm hoping you can see this food as the spiritual food, the spiritual awareness to help us build that hedge around us. It says, blessed is that servant whom is ruler when he comes, find doing so. Okay, now it's an easy thing for our king to take a look at the videos I brought. And he can say, okay, well, I see how recent they are. Regardless how many people have heard them, you are doing my will. You've been working at this, and, you know, you did well. Even though nobody wanted to hear you, you know, you did well because you believed enough to bring them forth. And that's what I'm hoping to hear is, you know, enter in my faithful servant. Now, here in verse 47 of Matthew 24, it says, Assuredly, I say to you that he will make him ruler over all his stuff. And this is talking for the millennial reign, okay? We've learned through our pains and sorrows and our sufferings, through the worldly authorities, okay? Corrupting their office, corrupting their own selves by coming after us. And that's why this whole earth was created to begin with, it's a big classroom, okay? There's many that are created for destruction. And those that are created for destruction are going to be destroyed, but they were created for destruction because they come against those who have a hedge around them, okay? Who keep the laws and the commandments, the every living word. And it says, but if that evil servant says in his heart, my ruler is delaying his coming, like many are, you know. It says, and begins to beat his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with drunkards. Now, it's, it's not meaning that you can't have a meal with somebody that's never heard of the Holy Scriptures, that you can't sit down and eat something clean and drink something that is not defiled so much. You know, knowing it was like clam okay, where it's got clam juice in it. Well, you don't want to eat or drink those things when you're sitting with a sinner. It's not speaking of these things. In fact, our king even ate with the sinners, and that's why he can right now tolerate us. Our Heavenly Father had to bring forth the mediator because we are so defiled, our Father can't even look at us. Okay, think about it. And it says, the ruler of that servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him, and in an hour when he is not aware of, and will do like he did, you know, what occurred to poor Isaiah there, where they put him into a log and cut him in half, 
because he spoke these truths. People don't like you when you speak truths. Once again, just take a look here. Look at the views I get, okay? <laughs> and Okay, so he's going to come in an hour or whatever that he's not aware and will cut him in two. Now, I have a question for all of you that believe that the Lord, Baal, loves you so much that no matter what you do, he's going to love you. Well, if that's true, who's he going to cut in half? <laughs> These ones that knew him, and yet they didn't feed the servants in their proper hour. They did not teach them the truth. In fact, they started running off and getting involved like a dog returning to its vomit or a pig after it was washed to return to the wallow again. And sometimes it's real bad, like Isaiah did here, you know, because he was casting pearls before the swine and the dogs, and they turned and rent him. And I have the same problem. I still cast out these pearls, and I'm getting rent all the time. Anyway, he says, and I'll cut him in two and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. There's going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And again, this was in Metithia. And this is while our king was walking the face of the earth alive before he laid down his life and took it back up again. But here, our king had sent his malik to Yachanan on the Isle of Patmos. This is the very last page and the very last uh, words of the Holy Scriptures. Just like Malachia, just before the New Testament, before Matthias started in the Holy Scriptures. Malachia, the very last verses tell you to remember the law of Moshe, to walk in these things. Here he's saying it again. Listen to this. This is what our king is saying to Yachanan. Whether it was our king's own words from his own mouth to Yachanan on the Isle of Patmos, or by the holy Malik that was sent to him, this is what he was told to write. Blessed are those who do Yahweh's commandments. His commandments. You could also say Yahshua's commandments, because what you do to Yahshua, you done to Yahweh. And what you think you're doing to Yahweh, though you may not even know him, if you don't know the Son, then you don't know the Father. If you don't keep the commandments and the laws, you know neither of them, and you're not part of even the few. There's billions that are not going to make the kingdom, because they're not of the few. I want you to be of the few. How do you, how do you become of the few? Blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates of that city. Now, what did it say back here? And I'll cut him in two and appoint him, his portion, with the hypocrites. Who's this? The ones that said they were doing it, and then they turned away and started drinking and getting drunk and all this stuff with sinners. They went back out to it because, well, you know, I got plenty of time. You know, I've been keeping his laws for 40 years, and he ain't come yet, so I guess I can go out there and, you know, get smashed and run with the whores. You know, it should be okay. I'll repent again. I know how to do that. So I'll just repent again later. But these ones, it says, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Why? Because they were not blessed. They did not keep the commandments. They were not blessed. So they didn't enter this kingdom. They didn't enter into the gates. Where are they? But outside are the dogs, the male prostitutes and the sorcerers, the doctors and such, okay, or even the warlocks and, and witches that are out there today, you know, but the doctors are prescribing what they call drugs, and they're basically magic potions, and most of them are poisonous, and they contain all kinds of unlawful things to put into your holy temple, unclean things that Deuteronomy and Leviticus explain in detail what not to even put in your holy temple. They're not foods, they're abominations. But these sorcerers, these doctors and such, they kill more people every year than guns do. They're going to be taken out of the scene. They're going to be not allowed in the kingdom. They're going to be on the outside. And the sexually immoral, okay? And we can all repent of these things. We can do it right now and not be part of this.
But then there's the murderers and idolaters, those that wear crucifixes on their necks and, and go to churches where there's these crosses up on the wall and everything else. Those are idols. It's not just the statues and such that are in Catholic churches today. It's all these things that you put your trust and your hope in to bring you salvation when our king said to trust in him. Have none of these idols before you. Don't call on Baal or Lord, and I'll accept you. But then it says, who else is this out there? Whoever loves and practices a lie. Now, when you wear a crucifix, you're doing it because your mom or your daddy or your preacher said that you should. It's a lie. <laughs> and if you practice it by wearing these things or whatever sin it is, you practice it, keeping Christmas or Easter, telling others it's great and, oh, you better behave or Santa won't come. That's practicing a lie and you believe it. Let's stop these things, my friend. Only few are going to make it into the kingdom. Are you going to be one of the few? Well, I hope so. Hey, look at that. Somebody liked my uh, one of the things I wrote. Isn't that interesting? Thank you there, Book of Revelation. I sure appreciate it. And I also answered part of your question in here. I hope that you take it to heart. I love you all. I love you, uh, Book of Revelation. I love you and everyone. I don't like, I don't love most of the things that you're doing. But the things you're doing that are right, hey, you're in my prayers. And I hope that you overcome to the point where you will be blessed for doing his commandments. With that I say, Shalom. Uh, may our king be with you. May he open your mind to the studies. Oh, there we go again. Look at that. I love y'all. <laughs> shalom.